you know, I bought this gimbal and I never use it, and so then you guys are stuck watching a shaky cam all over the place, so I'm going to try to use this more often. How's everybody doing there? Uh, thanks for joining once again. My name's Tom. Let's take a look at what we're going to try to do today. So we're back on the disassembly of the Beetle, and really all I want to get done today is I want to remove the glass and the carpet and the gas tank and expose all of the bolts and the wires that need to be exposed so in order to be able to separate the top from the bottom. I still have to work out how I'm going to separate the two and how I'm going to support the top once I get it separated but for today, let's just work on getting the rest of the stuff out of the car that needs to get out. So thanks for uh, joining me on this journey. And if, uh, if you're interested in this type of thing, stick around. Siphoning the tank. I just don't want to make a huge mess. I realize now that there's no real easy way to access that connection all the way up under there. So if I siphon out the majority of the gas, then the mess that I make will be minimal. And I can clean up a small mess, just not necessarily eager to clean up a big mess. Okay, so I figured out that I can lift up the gas tank in order to access those fittings. I have no idea about the big nut that's on the bottom of the gas tank. I'm just going to go ahead and pull. There's a small hose connected to the solid, the rigid brake line, or the rigid gas line that goes through the body. Um, I'm going to go ahead and undo that one and pull that out. There's the rest of that gas. Maybe I should have come prepared with something. I got something I can do here. I've still got... I've still got this fuel line that I can stick right there and I can drain the rest of the fuel. Kind of. It's a little big, but... like the uh, top tube of the front beam here. I don't know if you can see that. It 
it's like there's a gap there and then there's a gap here it looks like it's either poorly welded or it's been re-welded I'll uh, get deeper into that once I get this thing apart but I'm glad to finally be able to see down inside here and take a get an assessment of the condition underneath the gas tank and as expected everything looks pretty good the master cylinder down there is pretty rusty but that's all expected um, probably I mean I'm gonna end up replacing that anyway but uh, all the channels and the pan and the firewall everything looks uh, really good minimal surface rust so pretty happy so here's two of those bolts I was talking about in order to be able to separate the top from the bottom uh, I'm gonna go I guess I'm gonna move on next to uh, either the glass or the carpet I don't know I'm gonna have dinner first well it's Saturday morning and it's been pretty productive already um, I've already been able to get the windows out I don't remember I think I went over uh, getting out the uh, gas tank so it's there I need to get it out from under my feet so I pulled out all the windows and really all I'm working on now is preparing this body to get pulled off the pan um, I've located my my mounting bolts on the inside and I started to pull up the carpet really I just pulled up the sides where it connects to the pan um, and I did find some evidence of some more serious rust it's I'm still pretty optimistic about it let me show you what I'm talking about here we go give myself a little bit better lighting set up here so as I pulled away this this insulating material here I started to notice there's a lot of real flaky rust and um, it's pretty uh, soft sounding especially in this area you can see where it's separated I don't know if this is a previous repair or if this is the original pan um, I don't know yet once I get everything off I'll be able to tell uh, same thing goes for the battery tray here it looks like it's been repaired once before or it's about to go it was really clean all around the edges and it's really pretty solid you know here in the middle but there's holes here and there's holes here and there's something underneath it um, so I think there might have been a repair attempted on that already and they just kinda scab the repair onto the old metal instead of replacing it outright I uh, I mean it is a little disappointing to come across this just because of what I thought I had and I'm sure all you veterans out there are laughing at me for being so naive as to think that this was going to be as clean as I thought it was it did come from Colorado and it's not like it came from Arizona so it did encounter some salt and moisture over time but I'm still looking forward to being able to replace floor pans and things like that because I feel like they will give me uh, it's kind of a good beginner uh, exercise you know that I can build my skills on for when it comes time to doing more complex things like that heater channel uh, so I'm not too worried about it I'm not going to stress over it um, I'm, I'm gonna have fun with this and that's kind of been the whole goal is just to have fun and that's why I'm not trying to film every single detail because like I've said in the past I have no idea what I'm doing this is not going to be a how-to video uh, this is just more for those of you that want to follow me on my journey and maybe learn from my mistakes okay so uh, there did actually end up being a hole right here in the uh in the floor pan and you know the funny thing is uh, when I when I came to buy this car I looked underneath but I think I only looked under the driver's side so anyway there is a hole in the floor pan here and there's like 
you know, all along that seam, it's really bad. Uh, this whole, you know, this whole section's really bad. And then check out this repair under, uh, under the battery tray. It's, it's, it's pretty bad. So what you're looking at is they just use sheet metal screws, screwed it all in, and just used a ton of silicone to try to seal it, seal it all up. I mean, look at that, it's just coming right out. So, you know, it's fine. You know, most of the original uh, metal is actually still there. And so now I just need to decide if I want to repair, you know, one side, uh, do quarters, or just do both sides. Because even though the driver's side is pretty solid, it is beat the heck. Like, I don't know if they went off-roading in this thing, or if they just used... I can tell they used a jack in the wrong place. Um, so, there's all these spots where you can tell the jack was used and it's deformed the metal. There's one there, there's one right here, and then I think they did it right here. And this is all bent up and same thing goes for the other side um, so once I get everything apart and I get a better look at things I'll be able to determine exactly how deep I want to go with the, the uh, floor pan replacement okay well uh, that wraps it up for me for today this was days number three and four um, like I said before, I only get a couple hours a day to work on this thing, so this isn't going to be a fast project by any means. Um, so the next step, I have to buy some wood so I can come up with a way to brace up this body when I remove it from the pan. And um, so I don't know when I'm going to get around to that. I'm going to buy the wood today. Another thing I have to do is I have to... Um, organize all of this uh, stuff you know there's just I've got parts laying around everywhere so I need to come up with a good plan for uh, organizing it probably uh, kind of stack it in the order that uh, that I'm gonna work on it you know the stuff I'm gonna work on first needs to be on top and then the stuff that I'm not going to work on, the stuff that I'm going to work on last, like like the seats and the upholstery and things like that will probably have to uh, be on the bottom. So thanks everybody for watching. Thanks again for all the comments and the advice. You're not going to hurt my feelings if you tell me I'm doing something wrong. Um, I am going to do things my own way, but you know, I, I appreciate advice from people who have done this before um, and I will definitely take that advice um, very seriously. So thanks again, everybody, for watching. I hope to see you in the next one. So if I do, I'll see you next time.